macronutrients, what does that word even mean? Well, let's break it down into the parts. Macro, meaning large, nutrient, something your body needs to survive. So let's put it together. Macronutrients are nutrients that your body needs in large amounts in order to survive and thrive. When we're talking about large amounts, we're typically speaking in grams versus other things that we talk about in milligrams, nanograms, or micrograms. There are other macronutrients out there such as water and fiber, but we're not gonna touch on those. We're gonna talk about the macronutrients that provide energy to your body. And like you learned in the last video, when we talk about energy, we're talking about calories. The first macronutrient we're gonna discuss is the one you've probably heard the most about, protein. Welcome, my name is Trevor Lomax. I'm a registered dietitian who specializes in sports performance as well as weight management. Welcome back to the second episode of the weight loss series. Last episode, we talked about do calories matter? And if you haven't seen that video before you watch this one, go watch that one. It's linked in the card above. What you learned from that video is gonna be hugely important in implementing what you're gonna learn in this episode as well. If at any point you have any questions about what I'm talking about, please put it in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. As we continue with this series, please smash that like button so this video gets to other people who need this information in their life, and subscribe so you're ready for the next video as soon as it comes out. Let's get started. Protein is more of a functional macronutrient. Not only does it help us build and repair lean muscle mass, but it also has many other functions, such as helping with enzymes, hormones, bone health, as well as immune function. With so many roles, you can start to see how protein is so important to get in our diet consistently. Some foods that contain protein are mostly animal products like meat, dairy, eggs, but we can get some from quote unquote vegetarian sources like tofu, soy, tempeh. Other foods may contain some level of protein, but those proteins are typically either incomplete, meaning that they don't have all nine essential amino acids, or they're just not that high in protein, and although they add protein to our diet, we're not gonna count them as a protein source. So when you're losing weight, protein is super important because this is what's gonna help us retain lean muscle mass, right? Muscle is the functional tissue. It helps you move your skeleton, right? So exercise, walk, do the functional parts of your job or whatever you need to do in your life. And we really wanna maintain that lean muscle mass. I've never really heard of anybody wanting to achieve a beach body and losing all their muscle because the number on the scale is more important than the actual aesthetic or the confidence that they get. The important thing to remember is when we lose weight, we are going to lose lean mass, unless you're very, very new to training. That being said, about 33% of the weight we lose is lean mass. That doesn't just include muscle though, that's also things like water mass or other functional proteins within the skeletal muscle or other areas. When you're losing weight, the amount of protein that you want to focus on is 2.0 to 2.7 grams per kilogram. Now this may seem like a lot, but however, protein is not only there to help us maintain that lean muscle mass, but also protein is one of the most satiating macronutrients, meaning it makes us feel the most full. So having more protein in our day can help us feel full and satisfied although the calories, the energy we're consuming throughout the day is less than what our body needs, which again, is how we achieve weight loss. Now, if you consider yourself somebody who needs to lose a lot of weight, I'm talking 50, 60, 70 plus pounds, then you may wanna calculate this number a little bit differently. Instead of using your full body mass, you may wanna go and get an in-body or a DEXA scan to determine a more accurate level of lean body mass and calculate it based off of the lean body mass. This is because if you have a lot to lose, then calculating this number may give you a number of protein that is so high it is virtually impossible to achieve, which will lead to discouragement and in the end, unsustainability. Now, I think there's a ton more I could say about protein. However, if you have questions about it, put it below and I'll answer, but I'm sure there will be a video down the line more about protein. Let's move on to the next macronutrient, carbohydrates. The one that probably has the most disinformation surrounding it. Carbohydrates are used for energy, and specifically an explosive energy. For example, 
you sitting here right now watching this YouTube video, unless you're exercising, you're probably not burning a lot of carbohydrates like I am. However, if I were to start walking, I would burn a little bit more. And then I would start running, I would burn more. If I was playing a very intense sport like soccer, basketball, driving to the rim, hitting that dunk, then I'd probably be burning a lot of carbohydrates. Having a lot of carbohydrates in our diet is very important because having that fast explosive energy source leads us to have really high quality training sessions. Whether we're doing cardio or lifting weights, it's not only gonna help us burn more calories, but it's also gonna give our body a greater stimulus to adapt to. So that means better outcomes from the exercise that aren't even related to the weight loss, like better cardiovascular health, better muscle building, and things like this. Restricting this macronutrient is a typical strategy in order to enter calorie deficit that we talked about in the last video. However, I highly recommend that you avoid this strategy because those high quality exercise sessions are so much more beneficial than the weight loss effect that you get from restricting carbohydrates only. Some foods that contain carbohydrates are typically grains, fruit, vegetables do contain a little bit, however, not a ton, unless there's something like a sweet potato, and following suit, potatoes, pastas, rice, there's a ton of carbohydrate sources out there that can be easily mixed into your diet. Going back to the athlete plate that we focused on last video, we really want to focus on getting about a quarter of every plate to be carbohydrates. If you have a more intense day, maybe more exercise, maybe you're just more active in general, then you may want to add some carbohydrates to each plate throughout the day. If you guys are hyped up about adding some carbohydrates back into your diet, smash that like button for the algorithm because there's other people that probably need to add some carbohydrates back into their diet as well. Next, we're gonna be talking about fats, which is the most complex macronutrient that we won't dive super deep in, but let's look at a quick overview. The roles of fat in our body can be pretty vast, but just in general, we're gonna talk about how they are used for energy, a little bit for structure, and our modulator for inflammation, which is a natural healing process that our body goes through. Fats, unlike carbohydrates, are more of a low intensity energy source. So while I'm sitting here, by percentage of energy I'm burning, more of it is fat, but I'm also not burning a lot of energy just sitting here. You may have heard you need to do something like a low intensity steady state cardio to burn more fat where yes, technically you are burning more fat, but when we look at the last episode where we talked about calorie balance, it's more about burning calories than it is about burning specific substrates. There are many foods that provide fats into our diets and honestly, most of the fats you're gonna get just come along with other foods. However, there are foods that are high sources of fat. The thing to remember about foods that contain a lot of fat is fat is great. There's a lot of uses for it in our body. However, fat also contains a lot of calories like we learned about in the last video. So foods that contain just a little to a moderate amount of fat may be higher calorie foods. And remember, calorie balance is still important. Foods that contain a lot of fat would be nuts, seeds, including nut butters and seed butters, many oils that we cook with, as well as salad dressings and things like avocados. And just so we're clear, peanut butter, it's a source of fat, not a source of protein. Typically the best strategy when you're focusing on weight loss is to limit foods that have a lot of fat while still mixing in some of those foods that have high quality fats. That's because your body can function very well without a ton of fats. However, mixing fat into your meals does slow the digestion of those meals that means that when you feel full from the protein, from the fiber, you will feel more full for longer when you have a mixed macronutrient meal that also contains fat. If you watched last video, you know that alcohol is another macronutrient that adds calories to our diet, but this is outside of the scope of this video. Just know limiting alcohol is definitely the best way if you wanna lose weight. Now that we've dived into the three major macronutrients that provide our body energy, let's ask the real question here. Do we need to track our macros? I think tracking your macros, just like tracking your calories, is a really good tool to learn more about foods. Really, really learning the composition of foods that you eat and you probably really haven't thought about it that much. 
figuring out how to hit your macros is a really good way for you to kind of figure out the puzzle of nutrition and how things fit in the day as well as figuring out what amounts of each food get me to the goals that I need. And what does a full day of the nutrients I need really look like in a day or a week? However, the downside of tracking macros is really getting into the weeds of the numbers. Your body is not a perfect machine that functions off of really specific numbers. And that's where the art of nutrition comes in is knowing that these numbers are probably not 100% accurate in the first place, but also not exactly what your body needs every day. And having that variability is an important part of just being human. Getting too into the numbers can really hurt your mentality and relationship with food. So tread carefully if you've already had a rocky relationship. I'm gonna leave whether or not you track up to you, but if you just follow these generalized tips with the athlete's plates and such, you will find you can have a really balanced diet that fits everything that you need in and is also enjoyable without having to track all the time. Okay, so we've determined what all these macronutrients are and we've determined whether or not we're gonna track. Now, how do we know if we're actually making progress in terms of losing fat over losing just weight? There's a couple ways to do this and they really range in the accuracy of the system. A lot of them are gonna be harder to access, may cost money, or just may be hard to find. The first one was one I've talked about already, which is taking body measurements, where you can take circumferences of your waist and other parts of your body to help determine if you're losing fat versus muscle. This is probably the least accurate and least discriminatory. However, it is the most accessible. The second is called bioelectrical impedance. That's just a fancy term for an electrical current that gets sent through your body. Don't worry, you can't feel it. Based on the resistance to that current, the machine will tell you how much body fat and how much muscle you have. This is probably the second most inaccurate, but also the second most accessible. A lot of local supplement stores may have one of these machines in store that you can use for free, or you can purchase a scale online that has the little metal pads that does it for you. Typically, the scale you would get at home is gonna be a little bit less accurate than a in-body in a store that has more touch points, but this system in general is on the less accurate side already, so if you're doing this, it's really more of a ballpark estimate. The third one that I'm gonna talk about is actually the gold standard of body composition measurement. However, typically to find one of these, you have to find either a doctor's facility that has one and are getting it for a medical procedure, or you have to find a facility in town that would make you pay typically about $75 to $100 per scan to get this done. This is called a DEXA scan. This is used to not only look at body composition, but also can see bone density. To find one of these, I would just recommend searching in your local area for a DEXA scan, DXA, and see who has one available. Now, another important part of your journey is having a strong community to support you and even having other individuals on the same track as you to work together, to collaborate and share ideas. And that's why I've created the Discord. The link is down in the bio. Join and you can talk to not only other people on the same journey as you, but you'll have greater access to me as well. If you found anything in this video helpful, please share it with a friend, family member, or coworker who may be on the same journey as you. Next, we'll be talking about vitamins and minerals and how incredibly important they are to not only keeping you healthy, but also improving your body's function as you lose weight. So stay tuned.